Welcome to this special Nolan Show podcast exclusive to BBC Sounds. If you've got a view on this, please get in touch with us, Nolan at bbc.co.uk. The Alliance leader and Justice Minister Naomi Long has tweeted her support to ban so-called gay conversion therapy. She said this is not therapy. It's not recognised by any governing body as such. Some question if it is really necessary and concerns have been raised over whether it would mean of what it would mean for people with gender identity issues. I've been speaking to Malcolm Clark from the LGB Alliance and the Green Party councillor Mal O'Hara. I began by asking Mal whether he supported the Justice Minister's call. Uh, well, obviously, I'm in support of banning conversion or reparative therapy. Um, I think it's outmoded, it's outdated. No professional organisation relating to psychotherapy or counselling support it. Um, there have been a number of joint statements over the last decade from those professional organisations saying, in fact, that reparative or conversion therapy actually does further harm to people. And I think what's important is that we ban this um, and therefore we prevent harm happening to people who may already be vulnerable. Malcolm? Well, there's a lot that Mal says that I completely agree with. Um, I don't really say that um, we, would, we would need to define terms, really. Um, what do we mean when we say conversion therapy? If we're going to ban something, we should be clear what we mean. I mean, when, when people 20 years ago talked about conversion therapy, they meant electroshock. You know, Queen's University in Belfast carried out conversion therapy on gay men, and they used electroshock uh, treatment. And they'd show them uh, rude pictures and then give them an electric shock to try and turn them straight. Surprise, surprise, it didn't work. Um, now, everybody... Everybody, I think, whatever your sexuality or whatever, would agree that that's a waste of time and b just shouldn't be allowed. And it shouldn't be allowed for, if you, to try to convert gay people. It shouldn't be allowed to try to convert trans people. But what's happened, though, subtly, is that the definition of conversion therapy has shifted, and it now includes, as I understand from a lot of trans activists, any therapy that doesn't immediately affirm the trans identity of a child or a teenager or a young person. And my worry is that psychotherapists would be prevented from doing everyday gentle exploration of what's going on inside a teenager's mind, because that's not affirmation. And that would somehow be seen in the same category as electroshocks, which is absurd. So, are, so as long so, as we define terms. So, Malcolm, are you saying that if this legislation were to be passed, that you think it's possible that a young person going and speaking to a medical professional saying that they felt they were in the, the wrong body, uh, that they felt that they were trans, are you saying that it could become illegal for that medical professional or psychotherapist or whoever they are to 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 um in a wider conversation include conversation advising that person of the downsides of of transforming. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't advocate any therapist um, suggesting the downsides because I think that sounds too much like persuasion. But my concern is that there there have been a lot of trans activists who have argued that anything except immediate. Um, enthusiastic validation and affirmation of a child saying that they're born in their own body um, would itself be some form of conversion therapy. So I, I think it's up to trans activists and, and their supporters like Mal to, to, to define what they mean by conversion therapy. I'm all for the affirmation of children's trans identities once it's been explored and everything else ruled out. A lot of kids who go to gender identity clinics have other problems. They have eating disorders, they have bulimia, they have autism. Not all of them, but, but a number of them. And they, the, the causes of those disorders have to be explored. And it seems to me unlikely that a child with those other problems is always correct about what that child thinks is driving their unhappiness. And we have to allow space for psychotherapist to explore gently what's going on inside a child's mind and what's going on inside a child's house and home. But if we look at a Cambridge paper on sex, gender and gender identity, it, it said that with regard to conversion therapy in children, evidence suggests that the majority of children left alone 
reconcile their identity with their biological sex. The feelings, it says, of 60 to 80% of children with a formal diagnosis of gender dysphoria remit during adolescence. Absolutely. And one of the things, I had a big debate with a with a so-called scientist, and uh, he'd call himself a scientist in America, who argued that if a child demanded puberty blockers, the, 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 the tablets that stop a child going through natural, normal puberty, and if they were denied that child, that too was a form of conversion therapy. And that's why we have to be really clear what we mean by conversion therapy, so that trans kids get the best care and we're not inadvertently pushing kids towards a so, you know, destination that they haven't entirely thought through. <clears throat> so, Malohar O'Hara, what's your view? Should a doctor be able to lawfully say no if, for example, they don't think uh, puberty blockers are right for their patient? Um, I, I think, Stephen, we've, we've gone down a warrant hole here of the LGB alliance's usual anti-trans rhetoric. Um, you know, this is about conversion therapy, and, and Malcolm unfortunately spent no time talking about conversion therapy, but jumped on his hobby horse to um, attack trans people. And I'm worried that. But I'm asking the question. I, I, I'm not part of the LGB alliance. I'm asking I the question. Do Do you think doctors should lawfully be able uh, to withhold puberty block blockers if they think it's wrong for their patient? Well, you know, healthcare is governed by professional bodies and in Northern Ireland, the RQIA, and they would be the organisations that would be determining the part of their care pathways for young people who are trans and adults who are trans as well. And, you know, we know that the gender identity clinics in Northern Ireland, that patients have been waiting two or three years um, and they're waiting that time to get an appointment and be seen so that the service is chronically underfunded. But I, I think in, in terms of banning conversion or reparative therapy, there is no support for it amongst professional organisations. And the minister should move forward on banning it immediately. Stephen, the danger for this um, issue is that actually those organisations that profess to be able to um, reorientate someone's sexual orientation or gender identity have strong links with some faith groups and they're able to manipulate those faith groups and they're able to reach vulnerable people and cause further harm. So it's imperative that we ban it. Um, and as for the LGB Alliance, you know, there's very limited support from the, for them within the gay community and they actually spend so much more of their time focusing on anti-trans rhetoric rather than actually talking about anything which advances equality and liberation for people who are same-sex attracted. But do you think, Mal O'Hara, that gender clinics should in, in any way be allowed to continue to probe the different thoughts of children around their sexual identity? Yeah, but Stephen, you or know, should they just affirm already... it? Is it for those groups, those centres, to just affirm it? Well, I would be in favour of the self-declaration model. And actually, if someone affirms, says that their, their gender is X, um, and that might be different to the physical body or the biological body in which they're born, then professionals will be able to work through that process, provide support to someone and provide them the appropriate treatment. But I think the importance um, of this discussion today is there's no one questioning, um, you know, whether you should be entitled to favour some, something. This is about whether something should be made illegal. So do you think, do you support a legislation that may make it illegal for one of those centres to say to someone, we don't think you are ready to declare that, that you are in the wrong body. We don't I, think I, I, that you should, we should, you should get gender reassignment surgery. We don't think that it's the right time for you. Even that's actually what's actually what's happening at the moment. And I, I think we're being led by the nose by the LGB Alliance and their anti-trans rhetoric here. You know, if a young person or child presents with gender dysphoria or feels that they're in the wrong body, they will be linked into appropriate care pathways and provided professional medical support. Now, they won't be... The, the point about banning conversion therapy is organisations outside of professionally regulated medicine who are telling people, we can cure your gender dysphoria or we can use therapy or some form of, of treatment. But you're saying this is what's happening at the moment. But, the, but the, the discussion is around whether this legislation would stop centres being able to question um, a young person going in 
uh, who are who are sure in their mind at that stage, but may not be in subsequent months or years. Should legislation be 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 there to prevent those centres from having that conversation? Legislation should be in place to prevent outmoded and harmful forms of therapy which are not supported by any professional and Is it harmful for a centre to say to, I don't know, a 14 or 15 year old, you may think you're in the wrong body, but actually we don't think that um, that you are ready or have looked at this enough um, or you're, you're manifesting some warning signs of, of, of confusion where we do not think this is right for you. Stephen, Should they be able to have that conversation or not? Yeah, and what's interesting there is the premise is that, you know, if someone presents and says that they, they're in the wrong body or they have gender dysphoria, we automatically jump to confusion. If someone says they may be gay, we jump to confusion. We don't say to straight people or cis people, you're confused, go away and think about it. We accept it as a narrative truth. So we should do the same for trans kids and, and queer kids when they present for treatment or support. And, you know, we already have the well-established Gaelic principles in terms of autonomy for young people seeking um, sexual and reproductive health care. So if you're under 16, you can access the pill or you can access um, contraceptive services or STI screening. And this would be the same principles applied to trans people seeking support. Who are under well, what about this Cambridge study, which, which said with regard to conversion therapy in children, evidence suggests that 60 to 80 percent of children with a formal diagnosis of gender dysphoria remit during adolescence. I, I'm not aware of the particular study, Stephen, but um, you know I, I'm in favour of self-declaration. We've had a similar model in the South for a long time, and you know, the world hasn't fallen apart. If you take at face value those figures, 60 to 80 percent, and the and the process of gen- gender reassignment has begun, take that 60 to 80 percent figure and even consider it, and then think about how many children would have, as they grew older, not have got that that reassignment done. Stephen, the, the, the treatment that's offered for younger people isn't reassignment surgery. It, it's, it's hormone blockers, which can be reversed if they come off them. You know, I, It sets I, them I on the path to reassignment surgery, doesn't it? Uh, but it's when you're older that you will then be able to access that. I come on the show to talk about conversion therapy, um, and, and outlawing it, and, and, and that's what I hope the discussion would be. If I'd known it was specifically about trans people, I would have encouraged talk to trans people about their issues. They're the experts. They're the ones with the lived experience, and they have professional organisations which can advocate for their community. Conversion, Although I'll stand con- behind them and support them. Conversion therapy in itself, Malcolm Clark, is, it, it, can you not understand how people find it deeply abhorrent? Well, I do too. I mean, absolutely. I mean, the idea of electroshocks or anything that's bullying, of course, everybody agrees that's bad. What we're talking about is not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. To stop electroshocks and stopping crazy religious organisations that Mal referred to, of course we've got to do that. But the point is to do change their minds. You know, Tom Robinson, who wrote Glad to be Gay, a few years later decided to and he's now happily married and he's straight. Good on him, I don't care. And, and so gay people change their minds. Trans people may change their minds too. And the difference is that Tom Robinson, when he was a kid, didn't get put on a medical pathway. He could have changed his mind if he wanted. Once he'd had a bestseller with Glad to be Gay, he think, OK, maybe I'm straight. He can do that. If a kid gets on a medical pathway... The puberty blockers, by the way, are not entirely reversible, but that's another matter. But if they take puberty blockers and then they go on a medical pathway, there's a good chance that a big percentage of them will get surgery or hormones that will be irreversible. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Final word to you, Mal. Well, I hope to see the Minister move forward quickly on banning this harmful and unsupported quack therapy across Northern Ireland. Um, our MLA asked a question in January. He said he would move a pace with the UK government. The Tory Prime Minister last week said that he intends to ban it in England, and I hope to see our minister do exactly the same in Northern Ireland. OK. Thank you very much indeed, Mal. And thank you thank to you, Malcolm. Thank you.